Hi, Scott Martin here from Global Student Solutions, and just want to talk a little bit about the uh, SAT, ACT standardized tests. I know there have been some changes this year uh, to the SAT, and so people have questions, uh, but every year people have questions about these standardized tests um, in college entrance exams. So um, first of all, let me answer some of the most common questions that, that we get in our practice as we coach students through um, getting into and thriving uh, at university. So one is um, if I've taken my national exams or I've taken the state uh, graduation test, do I still need to take SAT, ACT, and TOEFL? Um, and let me just say that each of these tests have their own purposes. Um, and so the, the purpose of the SAT and ACT are really about college entrance. Um, they're about determining whether or not you have the academic ability to do college level work. Um, your state and national exams are for a different purpose. They're to measure the output of, of, of the academic institutions. So just to measure school output and see if you've learned enough uh, to be considered a graduate. So um, they're, they're kind of cross purposes. Um, in some ways they're asking similar questions, um, but with different kind of intent. So yeah, you're gonna have to take those entrance exams. Um, some schools, some specific universities have decided um, that you know, you may or may not need to, uh, but in general, yeah, you're still going to need to take those college entrance exams. Now, with regard to, uh, and, and here's what they are. So the SAT and ACT are really designed to replace um, college entrance exams. So each college and university used to have its own entrance exam. Can you imagine um, taking one for every school you apply to? Obviously, you wouldn't apply to very many, right? Um but these replace that and allows you to just take one exam and have it have it count toward a bunch of different schools. Now, with regard to the TOEFL, obviously our primary audience, uh, the people we're reaching out to are international students and, and students at international schools. Um, and oftentimes a school will say to you because of where your application is coming from that you need the TOEFL. Um, and I'll just tell you that if your school is in English and you've done all your exams in English and you've got the SAT and ACT, um, you're probably going to be able to get a waiver for that TOEFL exam. So you don't need to take the TOEFL. Um, you will need to get a waiver because they have to check the box because your address is overseas. So they're going to check the box, but they should be able to do that pretty easily. And so for the vast majority of schools, you're going to request a TOEFL waiver and they're going to give it to you. Um, and TOEFL is not an entrance exam. Its whole purpose is to uh, measure your language uh, ability in English. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, a, again, a different purpose, a uh, different uh, reason for taking it. Um, so what do you need to know about the new SAT? That's the next question that we get all the time. Um, and let me answer it by saying this. Uh, Sarah Wood at the US News and World Report wrote an excellent article. I'm not gonna rewrite it, um, but in short, uh, you, you do need to take the SAT. You still need to take it. Um, it by offering it in electronic form as the new SAT is, is available is a really good change. Um, and it's <laughs> way, way overdue. Uh, this whole idea that, that you should be filling in little bubbles and waiting for months for your result is, is ridiculous. And so I'm very happy to see that the SAT is addressing that ridiculousness, right? Um, and the main takeaway continues to be that you need to take these entrance exams seriously, get a good night's sleep before the exam, um, and, and, and do your best, <laughs> eat a good breakfast, right? Um, so those are still the same basic responses. It's just now we don't have to do it in such an old fashioned way. Um, another very common question we get specifically from uh, students at international schools is how often uh, should I take the exam? I heard that, you know, the more often I take it, the better my score goes. Well, there's a reason the score goes up when you take it multiple times is because those multiple times are over a span of time. So if you take the SAT in 10th grade and then you take it again, again in 11th grade, your score is gonna be higher because you learned more stuff in that year. And again, if you take it again later, it's probably gonna go up again because you learn more stuff. Um, so it's not because you're taking it multiple times that your score is going up, it's because of when you take it. So to get the maximum value out of your out of your test and to for that fee 
I recommend that you take the test between May and July prior to the year to your last year of formal school. So if if you're calling it your senior year or grade 12 or you know whatever the final year is before you are going to go to college. So a full over a year before you're actually entering college is when you want to take the SAT and ACT to get the best result. The only time you would need to take it a second time, either one of them, is if you're sick or there's some major malfunction the first time. So if you get in and just have a major panic attack um, or are feeling ill, um, you know, your car broke down on the way there and you had to rush in and you just feel like if you took it again, you would definitely score better. Um, then by taking it between May and July, there's time to take it again. And so uh, that's the reason I recommend taking it then. Um, and I think that's going to pay off for you. Um, how much should you, should you plan to study for the exam? Um, so we recommend taking a timed practice exam. Uh, the PSAT is a practice SAT, um, and it's offered at a lot of schools. And so that's a, a great way to get a, a practice at the exam. And there's also ways that you can do that online, but it's practice timed, practice exam um, does help you kind of figure out how to manage your time when, when taking a standardized test like this. Um, and so that's helpful. Other than that, um, spending your time and energy studying for your core courses um, not only uh, increases your GPA, uh, which is another key measurement that schools are you know, looking for, um, but it also is gonna increase your scores on, on the SAT. So um, a lot of SAT study time is probably not time very well spent, um, unless of course it's just completely foreign concept to you. So you're, all of your schooling has been in a very different way than the SAT and you're just overwhelmed by it or score unusually low on, you, on your practice tests and then looking at some specific study um, in math and reading comprehension can be helpful. I think those are the basic, the, the earliest questions. If you have other questions about the SAT or about anything else, feel free to reach out to us on our website. Um, we're here to help uh, your transition from secondary school to university. And then ultimately when you get to university to have a really wonderful experience while you're there, um, we know that this is a really important time uh, for you and we want to do whatever we can uh, to help make that a really exciting and um, affirming time. So uh, best of luck and uh, reach out to us if you think we can be helpful. Thanks.